How inbred is King every Charles? every video I have ever made, this is undoubtedly my most favourite one to research and make. So make sure you stay tuned. How inbred is King Charles? Okay. Very. Thank you guys so, <laughs> so much for watching. I am the shy. I know, I know. I'm not stopping the video there. King Charles is huh. already known to be quite inbred. I mean, he's got the fucking sausage fingies that look like potato sausages. Although most people in the UK and beyond know that King Charles is inbred, owing to the fact that his parents were related to one another, the true scale of his inbreeding is still undisclosed to the public until today. This video will expose the true extent of Charles's inbreeding, and it's really surprising. As such, there are three sections to this video. The first part will be theoretical and complex at times, as we detail the consanguinity coefficient. I will break it down as best as possible, and essentially this refers to how inbred someone is. The second part of today's shelf, video will detail and, and break giving down it to her how inbred her, like, Charles paw is, or get down. using his genealogy as method, and exposing some of the more forgotten parts of his family history. For example, how his parents are related through multiple lines, and how this influences King Charles's consanguinity coefficient. With all of that out the way, let's move on to today's video. To actually work out how inbred King Charles is, we need to be scientific and use an equation. Turns out, working out how inbred someone is, is actually pretty popular, so there's plenty of guidance online to support this. Nonetheless, I'm going to break it down in simple terms here, how to work out how inbred someone is. To do this, we need Love to that. use something known as the coefficient of consanguinity relationship, also known as consanguinity coefficient. This scale is from zero, the least inbred, to one, which is the most inbred, the suit is one. which is actually impossible to have. The reason is because in order to have 100% consanguinity, 100. or one, if we apply the scale, you would have to have a child with yourself which is, biologically speaking, impossible for a human to do. Listen, if it was possible, all I'm going to say is this. If it was possible, the royals would have found it, okay? The royals would have found a method to do it because they genuinely were on a conquest to basically fucking be the most inbred in an effort to ensure maximum wealth accumulation in the hands of one family. Okay? That's the entire purpose of, like, the the uh, the imp entire reason why this video exists is uh, because all of the royal families in Europe, which are all related to one another, uh, tried to maintain the purity of their bloodline, and there was a material reason for it. Okay? There was a materialist reason for it, and that was... They wanted to hoard all the wealth. They wanted to keep it in the family, okay? All the wealth and all the power needed to be kept inside of the fucking family, which is how they arrived at, like, all of these inbred freaks who straight up have their own specific brand of being inbred. This uh, shy historian is correct. There is a, I mean, he, he already covered this one too. Like, how inbred were the Habsburgs, the Spanish line, you can trace you can trace the very specific genetic disorder to the individual families sorry royalty you may have power but you certainly don't have the power to do that well at least not yet however there are also some other relations where it's possible sadly to have children with if two full siblings had a child with one another Despite being illegal in most nations, their child would have a consanguinity coefficient of roughly 0.25 or 25%. What about Egyptian dynasties? Dynasties across the board. I'm not entirely uh, familiar with Egyptian dynasties. I can't speak on that at all. But I would suspect that it's probably identical. Yeah, I mean, I know that they also had some fucking real uh, genetic disorders too. Like, what was it, King Tut? That was like... They straight up couldn't walk, right? And then they fucking died by the age of, like, 14, 15. 
percent. Charles II of Spain had a constant Grinity <laughs> coefficient of 0 0.25, but his parents were not full siblings to one another. This is because the consanguinity coefficient yeah. takes into account all- So, that's the thing. Like, these guys are so inbred for so many, uh, so many generations that, like, if you have a third cousin fucking one another, in a normal situation, it's, like, kind of weird, but it shouldn't lead to the same level of genetic complications as, like, siblings fucking one another, okay? But because- They've been doing it for so long that it's like inbred upon inbred upon inbred upon inbred basically makes it so that like an uncle and a niece fucking one another so many times over basically turns into like <coughs> third cousins fucking one another look like siblings fucking one another where the family circle turns in. Uh, yeah, the family tree turns into a family circle. All of the inbreeding of the person's ancestors and this stacks together. For example, if a person was to have a child with their first cousin, their child would have a consanguinity coefficient of 0.07, or 7%. However, if that child then went on to have their own child with a first cousin, this would then increase the consanguinity to roughly 11%. In fact, this table breaks down the basic consanguinity coefficient- Wait, what the fuck? Wait. What the fuck is this? A silver lining of our digital age is that you can ask a Habsburg his thoughts on anime girls. A commission dressed as Marshall's attire in the reign of Joseph I on Austro-Hungarian gold ship. Norm fan PJT. Wonder what Edward Habsburg would think about this. Oh, wow. Thanks a lot for sharing. Women don't wear the golden fleece. Apart from that, fantastic. You also have to look into the mirror at midnight or it won't work. Oh my God, he's literally responding. Also, is this guy even a real one? His facial traits are not as busted. They've fucking fallen off, dude. Look at this. Look at this guy. It's still kind of busted, but not nearly as busted. Yeah, Habsburg is in of the jaw fame. What did they do? Did they found did they find like the jawless the the most jawless person to like uh uh you know taint the bloodline so that they could like avoid the fucking uh the the omega jaw allegations? Like what happened? They overcompensated and they went in the other direction so aggressively. That this person is just straight jawless. Crossbred with a jawless breed. Yeah. They, dude, the, these guys, for the record, he just has larger jowls, which makes the chin line look more normal. I, th We're just insulting some random guy now. No, this guy is not some random guy. This guy is the direct great grandson uh, of the fucking person. What are you talking about? No, this is a royal, man. This is like a literal fucking royal. My man said random nobility. He's a hardcore supporter of Victor Orban. That's great. He's the Hungarian ambassador to the Holy Z. The Z of Rome, Petrine Z, or Apostolic Z, is the jurisdiction of the Pope in his role as the Bishop of Rome. Yeah, this guy's like actual nobility, for the record. It's just that actual nobility now, like, literally have... Actual nobility now just straight up have Twitter accounts and will shoot the shit. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, not verified though, so clearly not real nobility. Uh, 
Yeah, I'd like to see this motherfucker on Ozempic. You know what I mean? I want to see. I want to see what his jaw actually looks like when you fucking uh, take the the jowls away. I want to see what he would look like after buckle fat removal. You know, just to really get an understanding of how inbred he is. For certain relationships. So pause the video if you want to research this in greater detail. The reason why we should apply this to King Charles is pretty simple. Royalty, whether it's as old as Tutankhamun or modern day, still engages in inbreeding, mainly because until very recently, the correct choice of a consort, whether a queen or prince, should come from royalty, or at least aristocracy. Even though the late Princess Diana was not from royalty, she- Oh, he's descended from the Austrian branch, not the Spanish branch. They were replaced by French princess when Charles died childless. Oh, big L. Big L for the- Big L for the fucking Spanish branch of nobility. Wait, there's that that bloodline didn't dry out though, right? I don't fucking know, but I assume that there's still more, right? Also, how can you say the Habsburg jaw died out when it's kept very much alive? by one man and one man only as a matter of fact the only brown man on the planet to uh receive this uh genetic trait that's right i'm talking about january 6 organizer domestic terrorist and white supremacist ali alexander also known pedophile allegedly The most Habsburg jawed motherfucker I've ever seen in contemporary society. Well, not really allegedly, but, you know, just covering my bases here. Here it is. Here's another angle of that big, beautiful chin. And for those of you who think I'm joking, um, we didn't watch the Habsburg Jaw. We didn't watch the Habsburg Jaw, uh, you know, uh, video, but here it is. I've talked about it regularly. Tell me that this is not a continuation of this bloodline. Go ahead. Tell me a difference between the picture on the left and this picture. Can't. But he also continues the royal tradition of, like, pedophilia, too. So I guess, like, he really is keeping it alive in many ways. You know what I mean? Because, like, these motherfuckers absolutely would be uh, demanding dick pics from underage uh, boys and girls, really. Uh, just, like, photos of genitalia if they were, uh, if they were you know, alive in this day and age. Anyway, let's continue. She was the daughter of an earl, and she was, in fact, a very distant cousin to King Charles. Even the current queen consort, Camilla, is a secret cousin to King Charles. However, this isn't- Do you know any inbred people personally? Only Ludwig. Open secret and withheld to the public at large. If you want to know more, please click on this video. So how inbred is King Charles, given his parents' close relationship? Fortunately, this question can be easily answered. Because Charles is a king, we can locate his family tree very easily. And this is a huge family tree. Unfortunately, to get an accurate assessment of Charles's true inbreeding, we'd have to take into account all of his known ancestors. This is hard since we can trace King Charles's direct ancestry to William the Conqueror in 1066 and even beyond that. 
This difficulty then becomes even more complicated since we have to take into account the inbreeding levels of his ancestors. And as we know, royalty of the past loved to marry their cousins and aunts and uncles. So for the purposes of this video, let's look at all of Charles's ancestors up to his great great grandfather, King Edward VII. The reason why I've selected this is because King Edward VII is known to be an inbred king since his parents, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, were first cousins. If we look at Queen Victoria's ancestry, she was not inbred to any particular extent. So we will start from the ancestor of King Charles, Weak. which first experienced inbreeding, that is Edward VII. Edward VII was a bizarre king, although his behaviour was not caused by his inbreeding, between hosting 24 course dinners, to drinking three bottles of wine daily, to secretly fathering the grandmother to Queen Camilla when he was 60 years old, Edward VII was not exactly a Victorian monarch. Now, let's refer to his inbreeding. Because he was the product of a first- This is the only kind of palace intrigue and royal fancy I care about. The BBC should hire this man instead of the royalist dick riders that they have on staff every time, like, I don't know, some fucking, uh, some, some- inbred royal farts the wrong way okay that would make it so much more entertaining and so much more interesting if the only like because by the way what i'm talking about is literally true like the bbc for those of you who don't know have a specific correspondent for the royals as a matter of fact even cnn will like outsource to those royal correspondents um whenever they're covering the royals or anything like that and i i think that it would be much cooler if the royal correspondents uh had like this specific distaste for uh the royals in general uh, i think that would make the coverage much more interesting and unique cousin marriage edward the seventh's consanguinity coefficient would be almost 0.07 or seven percent to make things easier fortunately for the windsors edward the seventh was married to a danish princess alexandra and the two were very distantly related in fact, they were so distantly related to one another that it's not even worth recording what their relationship is, since their coefficient of consanguinity would be 0%. Princess Alexandra was almost not inbred at all. Her parents were second cousins to one another, as their great-grandmothers were siblings. This meant that Princess Alexandra's consanguinity coefficient was 0.03%, which is very low. Because Alexandra and Edward were almost not related to one another at all, their children would inherit a very low consanguinity coefficient, also known as inbreeding level. The best way to determine this is to go halfway between both parents' inbreeding level, meaning that their son, George V, would have had a consanguinity coefficient of 0.055%, still very low, all things considered. Now, things will become slightly more complicated. You see, George V married a German princess, Mary of Teck. He wasn't really German. In fact, she was raised in England because her mother... The Queen never farted, the most normal... It's disrespectful to think of the king shitting. The Queen never used to fart. The Queen no. never farted. Never. never. No, 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 no. Even when she passed? No, no. No gas released? Gas at all. So wait, the Queen, the qu the queen never farted? Never, ever. Not ever in a lifetime. Not when she was Queen, anyway. Did she poop? Did, po did the Queen poop? No. No. How dare you, my good sir. Dude, royalists are so funny. What? By the way, that's like royalists in the Western world are identical to what we suspect like Kim Jong un uh, Kim Jong il, Kim Il sung supporters are in in uh, the DPRK. You know what I mean? Like the very same BBC that routinely covers how fucking uh how how North Koreans are engaging in like forcible what is it called idolatry is that is that the right word yeah uh is it is the right word God I'm so fucking smart sometimes I blow my own mind um forcible idolatry uh, occurring in in uh, North Korea is a is a major major issue meanwhile they are supporting and facilitating that here in the West regularly Adelaide of Cambridge. <laughs> oh, not attractive. <coughs> Pardon me. Was what? a cousin to Queen Victoria. 
Now, this is an important detail because this means that Mary of Teck was a first cousin once removed to Queen Victoria, and Mary of Teck was therefore a second cousin to Edward VII, who was to be her father-in-law. Confusing? Yeah, this is royal family intermarriage for you. Just wait until my video on the Habsburgs. George V was therefore Mary of Teck's second cousin once removed, which means they had a coefficient of consanguinity of only 0.016, for easier purposes about 2%, incredibly low for royal standards. Because George V had an inbreeding level of roughly 5%, this means that any children he was to have with Mary of Teck would be halfway between this inbreeding level. So the inbreeding level he'd share with Mary of Teck translates to about 3%. This means that their sons, Edward VIII, the one who abdicated the throne to marry Wallace Simpson, and George VI, the father to Queen Elizabeth II, had a very low level of inbreeding, of roughly 2 to 3%. Looks like inbreeding once again cannot be blamed as responsible for Edward VII's irrational behaviour. George VI was an interesting royal. Hot. Since his marriage to Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, the future Queen Mother was viewed as unbecoming for a royal in line to inherit. Yeah, this the real the level five puzzle is <laughs> trying to figure out who the. <laughs> trying to figure out how inbred the royals are. That's the real level five puzzle. Tell me, threw the fucking stick out. Because Elizabeth, despite being from aristocracy, was the daughter of a Scottish earl. This is partly a reason as to why George and Elizabeth were not related in any way, shape or form to one another. This meant their two daughters, Princesses Elizabeth and Margaret, were virtually not inbred at all and had nearly 1% consanguinity coefficient. Turns out that our late Queen was one of the least inbred monarchs to have ever reigned over England. But then we had her marriage to Prince Philip, or before his marriage, Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark. This is where things are going to become complicated, so let's make sure you listen carefully if you want to know how inbred King Charles is. Unlike Queen Elizabeth II, Prince Philip was unfortunately inbred. This is because of his great-grandparents, and unfortunately for us, he's inbred through multiple lines. For example, Prince Philip's mother was a product of a first cousin marriage. Her grandfathers were brothers. Intermarriage also occurred through another line, Prince Philip's other great-grandfather, King Christian IX of Denmark, was an uncle-in-law to Prince Philip's great-grandmother, Princess Alice of the United Kingdom. In all, Prince Philip was slightly inbred, having a consanguinity coefficient of roughly 6%, almost the same extent of Edward VII, who was the son of a first cousin relationship. Now for the even messier part. Let's take an inbred individual, Prince Philip and marry him to a non-inbred individual, Queen Elizabeth. Their kids would be fine, right? Wrong. This is because, as many of us know, Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth II were related. On the royal family website, it claims that Philip and Queen Elizabeth are third cousins. Philip's great-grandmother, Princess Alice, was the sister to Queen Elizabeth's great-grandfather, King Edward VII. This means that they are precisely third cousins. But Hang on, because of how messy intermarriage in European royal families was since Queen Victoria, Philip and Elizabeth are in fact related through yet another line. Philip's grandfather, King George of Greece, was Princess Alexandra's brother. Remember, she was the wife to Edward VII. And I think it would have been better if it was like, if, if the graphics showed, instead of like the individuals when he's talking about it, the direct... Uh, like how how the the inbredness stacked, which he shows a little bit here, right? But I want to see the whole picture. Like I want to see the whole picture throughout the entire thing with like highlighted edits. You know what I mean? Because like there is way too much cousin fucking here. There is way too much cousin fucking going on, and way too much uncle fucking going on for us to like fully visualize the family tree turn family circle the circle of life and therefore she is the great grandmother to queen elizabeth because of this queen elizabeth and prince philip are also second cousins to one another at the same time they are also third cousins that's some really messy inbreeding right there they're definitely more inbred than ludwig yeah ludwig or even like the average uh, person living in iceland is like 
obviously still a little inbred, but nowhere near as inbred as, um, nowhere near as inbred as like the Royals are. So what does this mean when we finally look at King Charles's level of inbreeding? As a base value, we have to go halfway between Queen Elizabeth <laughs> and Prince Philip's <laughs> inbreeding levels. Halfway between 1% and 7% would be 4%. But because of the interrelationship between Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth, there is yet another consideration. Firstly, the second cousin relationship would mean another 6% of inbreeding, and a third cousin relationship would be another 3% of inbreeding. This means that King Charles's inbreeding level cannot be 4% because his parents were in fact related to one another in multiple ways. Because of the multiple lines of relationship, this acts as an enhancement to the children's level of inbreeding. So we would, as a base level, combine the second cousin relationship, 6%, and apply that to the third cousin relationship. Why are we watching this video? Sleeper video about Ludwig's family. Please cover the news, newsman. <laughs> Yeah, this is Ludwig's family. Ludwig's a direct descendant of, of British royalty. Three percent, which totals to... No, man, he's just like a regular old uh, New Hampshire white guy inbred, okay? That's like normal. That's like European inbred, which is fine. Well, it's not fine, but it's like, uh, oops, like cousins. About nine percent. Then when we look at the parents, we can see that there are already some trace elements of inbreeding in Prince Philip. As a rough estimation... King Charles. This is pretty funny. Dude, I don't have a thought on this. I don't know why you think I will have a thought on this. I will literally, I will quite literally never have a thought on this, okay? This is consanguinity coefficient, uh -huh. his level of inbreeding. By the way, Kaya's Kaya is ripping through that now. 13%. To be Come precise, on. Charles' girl. inbreeding level is roughly just over 10%. And there we have it, how inbred King Charles III is. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I had- What, Ludwig's actually inbred? I thought that was a joke. Yeah, Ludwig's uh, grandparents are related to one another, but like not super much.